Uh, gender-based violence is basically uh, any harmful action that is targeted towards an individual on the basis of their gender. It could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be mental, but it has far-reaching consequences on an individual's life and the communities uh, and people who live around the individuals or rather the survivors. Uh, we take it very uh, seriously because uh, we realize there are strong links between gender-based violence and the right to food. So to mark the days, uh, Viago Forestry is intentional on creating awareness and highlighting on why it is important for us to speak up against gender-based violence. During the next uh, 16 days, uh, we have our colleagues in the countries and partners who will be participating in uh, some challenges uh, where they will be able to explain to us what it means to them and we'll highlight these stories with the aim of also helping them understand and create more awareness around uh, gender-based violence in the communities. Maybe you can just mention. Uh, since the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, uh, happened in 2020, we got reports, especially within our partners, that uh, there's been increased cases of gender-based violence. And this is because of scarcity of resources within the household mostly. Uh, this in itself could aggravate the situation. And that is why most of our programs are directed towards uh, food security and livelihood improvement because you know some of these are some of the triggers of gender-based violence. Uh, not only the physical violence but also some that is directed towards children, you know, early marriages and harmful cultural practices such as FGM are also issues of concern. And you'll find for instance a family could decide to marry off one of their daughters because they do not have food to eat and they know that at least when wherever she goes, she'll get access to food and whatever exchange that family would get uh, in exchange of the girl, then it means they have, they have access to finances to able to purchase food. So it actually um, makes women and girls very vulnerable because it disables them from expecting their full potential because of the vulnerabilities uh, that they're exposed to. Uh, many a times, uh, people relate with the physical part of it uh, which is maybe easier to, to detect, but the worst of it is the emotional and the mental, where the survivor could not have physical harm, any physical uh, visible signs, but mentally this individual is drained. Uh, it's affecting the way they perform, it affects the way they relate to their families, and they cannot be able even to contribute uh, in a meaningful way in their communities because they are they are hurting their open souls within them that no one can be able to see. So for us, it's for to encourage them to speak up because it's only when you speak up that someone will get to understand what you're going through and seek help whenever uh, it happens and not to wait until things have gone out of control. There are many uh, opportunities for reporting. Uh, the local police is uh, a first place, but again, uh, people need to be also more informed about what to do in case maybe it becomes more violent and you've got to collect evidence where uh, you need to be able to work with other referral services so that they're able to get that. But also there are toll-free numbers that are now available uh, in all the countries that you work in, there are toll-free numbers that support uh, GBV survivors and victims. Uh, I mean, it is, uh, it's a bit absurd that uh, society has normalized uh, an issue that is causing uh, untold pain and suffering to individuals and it's because uh, again our social norms sometimes uh, some many times have dictated how people behave in a society how you dress uh, how you relate with people and the way you behave so at times uh, the way you behave is determined uh, is decoded differently by someone else and that could put you into trouble and I think society needs to be more receptive about people and uh, things that render them vulnerable, that they should be able to respect people's rights. Irrespective of who you are, you have every right to dress the way you can, you should, you feel like. You should be able to uh, behave in a certain way without being decoded as someone who is asking for it. Yeah, for lack of a better word, that's what they say, you are asking for it, that is why you got raped or someone touched you inappropriately. And what would you say of that child who grows up in a home and someone else decides that uh, they need to go and, uh, and undergo FGM, I mean, what did they do to ask for it? Is it because they were born 
in uh, in a family and someone else decided for them who decides that a child should go and get married and uh, cut off her childhood and uh, you know dreams and aspirations just because you are upon a girl that someone else decides that uh, you do not have a right to be able to live a full life it's uh, it's very sad and uh, and disturbing that society has normalized such practices and uh, need to be put to an end so that everyone can enjoy their rights.